sometimes when I wake up in the morning. I think of being alone in prison, waiting to face interrogation, knowing I'll be tortured. I don't see how I could ever hold that. I, I feel so frail, vulnerable. Even a look could destroy me. How could I hold up under the things we do to each other? drive by this row of hooches and a little three-year-old kid in uh, dirty gray shorts used to run out and scream, you're Marines number 10. And we'd always go back, oh, kid, you know, all this stuff. And uh, so one night the kid comes out and says, Marine, you're number 10, and throws a rock. So we figured we'd get him because this was a way of having fun. And the next night before we went out, we all stopped by COC, which is right by the ammo dump, picked up the biggest rocks we could get our hands on and piled it in the back of the truck. So when we left the combat base, uh, we just turned the corner and we saw a little kid. We were waiting for the kid. He ran out of the hooch and he's going to scream Marine number 10. And we didn't even let him get it out of his mouth. He just picked up all the rocks and smeared him. We just wiped him out. And in fact, the force of the rocks was enough to knock over his little tin hooch as well. And uh, I don't know, I, don't, I can't say that the kid died, but if it would have been me, I would have died easily. The rocks, some of them were as easily as big as his head. And uh, it was looked upon as funny. We all laughed about it. And then we forgot about it. WBAI New York. And it, it took me about a year to even be able to recall the situation. Uh, I think it said something about the entire attitude of us over there. I never had a specific hatred for the Vietnamese. Uh, they, didn't, they didn't figure in any calculation as to being human. They just either got in the way or they weren't there. And also we had this habit uh, when we leave the combat base and we take sea ration crackers and put peanut butter on it and then stick a trioxaline heat tab in the middle and put peanut butter around it and let the kid munch on it. Now they're always looking for chop chop and the effect more or less of trioxaline is to eat the membrane out of your throat and if swallowed could probably eat holes through your stomach. What if a bomb fell? I mean, what, what would we do to each other? There'd be no food. Poison. We'd have no food. What would we turn into? What, 
what would we do? I just don't know. I, I just don't know what I would do. GIs in the army that just aren't going to take any crap from anybody. And the commanding officers can't do a thing. I I'm serious. Look, I'll see you around. I've got to go now, okay? I'll see you before I leave. Bye-bye. I need a lot of water. Oh my god. What could I do that would... Look. 
take a really long time. Yeah, it does. Breathing is, um, to me, a very kind of rhythmic and slow thing. But the thing that, that I like about it, the reason it's important to me, is that it's a very, it's a very personal thing. It's a thing that, um, that I've discovered recently that is different from so many of the other things in my life. It um, is different from raising a child because it's uh, kind of all mine and children move away from you. You have to raise the children with many other people and this I really do alone and I find it very private. And it's different from being active in the community because that's what you do with a lot of other people. And this you do alone. And when I have a finished product, it's finished. Mm -hmm. And it's mine. Mm -hmm. Someday you'll go outside. You can spread out in the earth and be in the sun. 